and welcome to Vox Markets. I am John Hume, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Tom Clayton, who is the CEO, and Dowd Khan, who's the CFO of Newly Floated Intelli AM. How are you doing, guys? Hi there. Hi, John. Hi, good. Thanks. Excellent. Great to have you on. Uh, good to see uh, a company getting to market in what, what has been a very, very tricky environment for uh, for new IPOs. Um, I think there's a good reason for that, and that, that, that you're doing something very interesting. Tell us a bit about the company and, and what it does. Yeah, so uh, essentially Intellium AI is a, is a machine learning platform that's been developed for the manufacturing industry. Um, and it's an industry that we're already operating in for the last sort of past 10 years mm-hmm. with relationships with uh, 50% of the world's top 10 food and beverage organizations and many of the world's top 100 FMCGs. Uh, essentially, the platform is to boost productivity, which is obviously a, in great need, not, not, not just for the individual competitive advantage of these sites, but also um, obviously in boost for, a boost for the country in, in that respect as well. And essentially the platform, it, it operates by doing that in terms of improving the sort of the throughput, reducing waste streams in terms of runtime efficiencies, supporting reliability and, and stability in the operation. And also supporting the uh, the sort of ESG targets, so the supply chain and um, sustainability uh, metrics as well. So it's, it's quite dimensional in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tell us a bit about where the company's come from. As you say, it's, you know, it's got a long track record. This is you know, great, great to see for uh, for, for what, what would be a young company on the market, but 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 as you say, a, a well established company in, in in the real world. Yeah. Um, so the the business is twelve years old, um, and it's started as life as a, a service uh, consultation business, uh, providing engineering asset management solutions for the, the, the large manufacturers. Uh, it's essentially grown uh, over, the, over the years to a sizable team based in Sheffield, which includes automation engineers and a lot of domain expertise, which is, is, which is a big requirement for the platform. So being able to safely ingest data to a cloud and then understand the data for supervised learning is is one of the keys to the the sort of power and the sort of differentials of the of the product so that's the sort of backbone behind it essentially a strong business profitable business that continues uh its services through uh, service and consultation but now with the the added uh, ai product on on top of it as a software product yeah, yeah, potentially tra- transformational. Not as you say, not just for you, but for for, for productivity across the, uh, the the country's industry as a whole. Uh, Dow, perhaps you can tell me about sort of what this translates to in terms of the numbers. What 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 are we talking? What sort of scale of a business are we talking about today? Uh, and then perhaps we'll we'll come on to the opportunity and where 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 you'd like to get to. Yeah, I think so. Um, our financial year end is um, uh, is in March. So as of uh, sort of March twenty four. Um, the existing business was running at around 2.8 million of, uh, of revenues uh, and profitable uh, by a few hundred thousand pounds. And, um, and looking forward, you know, the, the estimates that we have in the market today, um, you know, point to uh, around 4 million of revenue uh, to March 25, you know, and growing to sort of um, to 8 million beyond that. Um, we hope that uh, we remain profitable through, through that period, um, you know, with, you know the two elements of the business, obviously the the, the consulting business remaining highly profitable, uh, and the new machine learning part of the business sort of going through a period of investment, uh, but should be by the second year sort of cash flow break even, uh, and then fully profitable by year three. Mm. So, so that sounds like like the the consulting business is essentially funding the development of a product which which in turn could go on to be extremely profitable. Yeah, absolutely. In in many ways, there's obviously you've got the profitable business, but that 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 consulting business obviously has the customer relationships as well. So one of the unique things about this, this combination of having domain expertise um, on the in, industrial engineering side and also having the software side of things is that uh, most software companies that you see that come out of Silicon Valley spend millions and millions on sales and marketing in order to try and generate their first wave of customers. Where essentially the through through the consulting business we have. Um, already got those customer relationships and therefore don't need to spend anywhere near that type of money to to, to move those customers into being fully fledged kind of machine learning based platform customers. Yeah, so, so is it, I mean, it feels like a sort of natural course that, that, that they're possibly looking to take anyway, given, given all the developments going on in the AI industry. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, but also with the combination of sort of the industrial engineers and the machine learning, you get what we talk about kind of the four dimensional approach to insights. So many sort of AI 
um, uh, type solutions in the market today, really only looking at kind of one dimensional type inputs such as monitoring, you know, um, vibrations on a machine or, or, or uh, speed settings on a machine, but we're looking at everything together, layering, layering that on top of each other and providing really deep insights uh, across the areas that Tom was talking about. Yeah, indeed. And, and, and obviously, the, you know, these very large, large FMCG companies are always looking to, to, to shade costs where they can, presumably this is going to help a great deal with that for them as, 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 as buyers of your products. Yeah, I mean, so the the typical uh, approach from the consultation business has always been sort of pitching up to sort of plant managers. The machine learning learning product in itself has suddenly taken us to the boardrooms of these uh, uh, sort of same businesses because uh, the COO and the COEO of these operations is obviously now seeing one two percent or greater efficiencies in their sort of bottom line in respect to operational improvement, which is obviously of huge value to these guys. Um, uh, I mean, just to give you an example, where a typical, uh, what, what people may term predictive AI or a more even a more traditional way of monitoring uh, perhaps condition of a production line, uh, we've taken a, what would have traditionally been 600 data points in a given month to 400 million data points in the same period to create insights way beyond the sort of normal traditional or even what we would argue competitors are providing. And these are not just about understanding the the, the sort of condition for where there is or a large degree of mitigation in place, but actually um, literally down to different skews down the line, what the optimum uh, tolerances, run speeds, tank levels, you know, right down to things like blocking filters, sticking valves, supply chain, you know, it, it goes on and on. I mean, and, and you're quite right, manufacturers are always looking for that extra one, two percent. But in some cases, and 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 given where productivity is at, you know, five, ten percent is is very, very achievable. So them numbers are obviously turning to uh, significant gains. And I say that when you consider that the food and if you look at the classic metric, should I say, for monitoring food and beverage efficiencies, sort of sits around the 50 percent mark in the UK. So huge opportunity for growth. Uh, and obviously the, the product is there to provide that, that yeah. you know, to realize that opportunity. Yeah, indeed. I mean, Dad, the numbers, the numbers you spoke about, you know, it sounded like there's already rapid growth in the pipeline. What is the scale of the opportunity? I mean, this is, FMCG is a huge business, not just in the UK, but worldwide. Uh, you know, how big can this get? I mean, for us initially, I think the focus is, uh, focus is around the UK where the customer relationships exist. But if we were to expand that across, you know, across Europe and across the globe, because a lot of the customers obviously are, are international names. And, um, you know, we think these, you know, it's a multi-billion billion pound industries uh, that, we're, that we're focusing around uh, and the type of savings that we can make. I think, you know, it, it certainly, you know, if we're able to, to succeed in the first phase of growth around the UK and then move into kind of more international markets. And yes, we're talking about, you know, you know, um, you know overall opportunity in the billions uh, for us ultimately. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I, I mean, you know, obviously you know, significant expertise and experience in the group that underpin this. Perhaps you could just sort of tell us a bit specifically about the, the, the kind of talent you've got in the business. I know the founder is still still part of the business as well. Uh, and where this takes you in terms of product development? Yeah, so the, the business itself, uh, I mean, I've mentioned the consultation side of the business. So we've got manufacturing managers, ex-chief engineers, uh, SAP key users, and all the different array of skills that you're typically you would require to essentially run an FMCG factory in, mm -hmm. in truth. And, and we have that to obviously support the needs of, of clients in that respect. Uh, couple now with that is we have an automation team, uh, which is essentially, which is paramount to the product because uh, safely uh, ingesting data from any type of control system into a, you know, a universal location where, where you can actually run the more modern day machine learning and create the sort of algorithms is, 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 is extremely important. And then working close by with those are data scientists and software engineers. So data scientists are, are, are essentially cleaning the data, create, creating the stacks in many respects. And of course, the software engineers visualize it. Uh, and provide that to the customer in a timely manner, in a visual manner of way, that, in a way that they can act upon that and, and obviously realize the benefits that the product's giving them. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it really is. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of hype around AI at the moment, but but I, I don't think I've heard many stories that are, are really talking about the application of AI in, in, in a sort of physical real world, like, real world like this. I mean, it's, it sounds like a you know, significant, significant leap in terms of how we, we're using AI. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I would add that in manufacturing at the moment, there is a lot of um, noise in the, in, the in, in sort of sector about, AI and with that becomes a level of competition which is sort of 99 percent focused on the provision of some, some sort of hardware solution whereby uh, the the sort of suppliers are asking somebody to install sensors that may provide one two or in in some cases three parameter points but very very minimal amount of data that's essentially linked to some sort of transmission or some sort of part, some part of the machine in order to provide an insight, you know, and it's, it, it, and then what they're doing is they're taking pulls of information in what they term a data lake in the sense that uh, they're then broadly applying that to similar classifications of equipment in order to try and pro provide some benefit. Our approach is very different. Um, and we, we treat ex every component as a, as its own unique fingerprint. Uh, the algorithms are very, specific to the customer's needs and uh, as these are very bespoke operations and as we mentioned the sort of the dimension the four dimensions of insights that we provide um you know we we we, we might be for even just looking at the a similar um, um sort of application where if you were looking at condition we also layer in with the same application speed load fill levels on the tank etc cetera, etc cetera. so the, the amount of information, the uh, the elimination of any false alarm, positive detection is, 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 is much greater, it's much higher, uh, even in just the same case application. But obviously that's before we get into the other type of insights that we provide. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you've got a genuine sort of competitive advantage in the approach you're, you're taking here. Um, and sort of just turning back to the listing. So, you know, you've been around for, for, for a while. Um, what, what, why, why list uh, now? I think obviously the um, you know the as you say AI is a big a big thematic topic at the moment. I think there is a, there is a bit of sort of a race to to be able to provide the the correct solutions, particularly into kind of areas like manufacturing. Uh, one of the things that we realise is that while we believe we've got a um, a good lead against the competition in terms of what we're providing, we also realise that you know we need to be at, at the front of our front of the pack in terms of getting our solutions installed and, and being used so once the product's installed it becomes you know very sticky um, when you're using it to govern the manufacturing site itself it's not something that you kind of pull out once you're once you're using it to, to gain these efficiencies and therefore while we have the customer base that uh, is ready and willing and able to, uh, to 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 have these products we need the resources um to to be able to to deliver to our customers and you know with a large pipeline of opportunity we didn't want to be waiting on that over over a few years as you've mentioned before you know we've got a prof business uh, on the consulting side but to, we, we needed an injection of, uh, of capital um in order to uh, to move the business forward uh, but also the 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 advantage of a listing is that that credibility that it adds um with the customer base in terms of what we're doing that the publicity around it um, the ability to kind of market around what we're what we're trying to do, uh, and therefore, you know, we're I mean, we're we're serving customers that they themselves, many of them, are listed on stock markets, and therefore they kind of understand, um, you know, what that means and the what you have to go for go through to to be a listed company in terms of the, the regulations and the and the control systems and everything else that, that go with it. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a shareholder in one of those listed companies, Unilever. I'm pretty sure. Uh... They'll be looking very closely at this technology and, uh, and I hope it unlocks some productivity there. Um, no, guys, uh, congratulations on coming to market. It sounds like absolute, absolutely fascinating technology, as I say. Really take, take an eye into, into the real world and uh, I think that's what we all want to see, especially from, uh, from a British company. So, uh, uh, as I say, very best of luck on your journey as a, as a listed company. Thank you, John. Thanks very Cheers. much, John. Thank you.